Welcome to our today's lesson whereby we are going to derive the shear stress equation. And for us to derive the shear stress equation, we are going to consider these three figures. Figure A shows a simply supported beam carrying a UDL over the whole of its span. And this uh, simply supported beam have got two sections, section AB as well as section C to D. Figure B shows the part of this uh, beam, whereby on section AB, the beam is subjected to a bending moment of M and a stress. On section C, D, the beam is subjected to a bending moment of M plus delta M as well as this stress that we have written. Now, at the neutral axis, the bending stress is zero. That's why it is known as neutral axis. No stress acts at the neutral axis. But above the neutral axis, the bending stress increases from zero to the maximum at the top of the uh, beam. Now, the distance between section AB and CD is delta X. Now, at a distance y1 from the neutral axis, we have an elemental strip or a, an elemental cylinder that we are going to consider. Figure C shows the cross-section of our beam, whereby the breadth of the beam is B and its length is delta X. We have the neutral axis that uh, we also have another line or level EF which is at a distance Y1 from the neutral axis. Now above level EF we have an infinite number of elemental cylinders. Now considering one of those elemental cylinders that we have uh, drawn here, this uh, elemental cylinder is subjected to bending stress at both of its ends as well as bending moment. Now, the bending stress at the end of this elemental cylinder on the section AB will be given by M over I multiplied by Y. Now, this equation we had derived it uh, already in our previous uh, video. That is derivation of the bending equation. Whereby uh, we usually have this relation M over I is equal to stress over Y. Therefore, when you make stress the subject, we are going to have M over I multiplied by Y. Therefore, this is the stress of the stress on the end of the elemental strip on the section AB. Likewise, the stress of this elemental strip at this end on section C to D will be given by stress plus delta stress because that is the stress subjected on the elemental strip at section C to D, which will be equal to the bending moment of M plus delta M, divide this by I, times Y. So those are the stresses at both ends of this elemental cylinder. Now, M, Stress is usually caused by a force. From the topic of simple stress and strain, stress is usually given by force divided by area. So making force the subject, force is usually given by stress multiplied by cross-sectional area. Therefore, where there is stress, there must be a force that have caused that stress. And therefore, the force on this elemental cylinder on section AB is going to be stress 
multiplied by cross-sectional area of the cylinder. Therefore, the stress on section AB is my over I, therefore we substitute it here, therefore we are going to have my over I times the cross-sectional area of the elemental cylinder is going to be delta A. Therefore, this is the uh, force on the end AB. The force on the end C to D is going to be given by stress, which is M plus delta M over I multiplied by Y times the cross-sectional area of the cylinder, which is delta A. Therefore, this is the force on at the end CD on this elemental cylinder. Now, when you look at these two forces, we will find that the forces are different. They are acting on the same line, but in opposite directions. Therefore, we are going to have a net unbalanced uh, force. Now, the net unbalanced force on this elemental cylinder net unbalanced force on this elemental cylinder will be given by m plus delta m over i multiplied by y times delta a which is the force on the elemental cylinder at the section c to d minus m m y over i multiplied by delta a so when we calculate this difference we are going to have delta m over i times y times delta a therefore this is the net unbalanced force on this elemental cylinder so you can call this equation one now this is the net unbalanced force on one elemental cylinder now for us to get the total unbalanced uh, force we are going to consider all the elemental cylinders that are above this line EF. And for us to uh, get that total, we are going to integrate this equation here. And therefore, the total unbalanced, total unbalanced force will be given by integration of equation 1, that is integration of delta M over I times Y times delta A. So this uh, will result to delta M over I Y times delta A. Now, when you integrate y times delta a, that is I, integration of y times delta a is going to give us a times bar y. And therefore, um, the total unbalanced force will be given by delta m divided by i multiplied by a multiplied by bar y whereby a is the cross-sectional area of the whole beam that is cross-sectional area of the section above ef of this uh, beam and bar y is the distance from the neutral axis to the center of gravity of the area above e F. Now, this total unbalanced force will cause the beam 
to fail as a result of sheer, sheer stress. And for the beam to be able to resist failure because of this uh, total unbalanced force, it has to produce a shear resistance. And this shear resistance must be equal to this total unbalanced force so that the beam doesn't fade due to excessive shear stress along line EF. And therefore, the shear stress Or in other words, the shear stress that will be developed to be able to resist or to counteract this uh, bending uh, moment here. So we are going to have shear resistance. The shear resistance must be equal to the total unbalanced force, total unbalanced force, so that this beam doesn't fail as a result of excessive shear stress. Now, the shear resistance will be given by shear stress multiplied by cross-sectional area of the beam. And the cross-sectional area is given by breadth times the depth, that is dx. So that is the shear resistance, which must be equal to the total unbalanced force. And the total unbalanced force is delta m divided by i multiplied by a times bar why? Therefore, when we make shear stress the subject, shear stress is uh, usually denoted by this symbol that we call tau. Tau. T-A-U. So when we make uh, tau the subject of uh, uh, this relation, we are going to have shear stress is equal to the is equal to delta M divide by delta x times a times bar y divide this by i times b so the shear stress is equals to delta m over delta x a bar y divide by i b now Delta M divided by delta X, that is the shear force, which is denoted by S. And therefore, we are going to have the shear stress being equal to shear force multiplied by cross-sectional area times bar Y divided by the moment of inertia times the breadth of the beam. And therefore, this is now the shear stress equation. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching our video. Please, if you haven't subscribed, um, subscribe. Uh, give us a thumbs up, that is a like, comments, and also share our videos to your friends. Thank you very much.